his fish. Right there. Hey. All right. Fish on. Now, I've never fished this lake before for kokanee, but I found that if I just apply the same formula, no matter what lake I go to, I can come away with limits uh, consistently. And that formula consists of three things that I primarily focus on. And that's going to be location. Obviously, you got to fish where the fish are. Depth and speed. So you combine those three things and you, you're in that target zone uh, where you're going to produce fish. Let's so I can get this guy to the boat here. Feels like a decent fish. Nice size kokanee. <laughs> All right, got him in the boat. Nice. First fish of the day. There you go. Nice little chromer. Take him in the cooler and get this back deployed. There's fish. Right there. Nice. So when trying to figure out locations on lakes, plus especially if I'm not familiar with them, uh, I'm gonna use some basic Topographical landmarks are the bathymetry, so look at the depth data for that lake. Um, even though kokanee aren't really deeply associated with structure, you'll still find them associating with points, uh, inputs of water, so anywhere there's stream inflows, and ledges. Um, so kokanee are filter feeders. They swim around with their mouths open and filter out plankton. And that plankton communities are associated with algae growth. And algae growth is going to be associated with coarse sunshine and uh, up, uplift or upwellings or inputs of nutrients. And so those ledges and those inputs from streams um, and points, you get little uplifts of, from the bottom, especially in reservoirs with current. And those fish will associate with those areas because that's where that plankton is going to concentrate. I think we can get this fish in here. Oh, that's a nice size kokanee. Over here. Or is it a rainbow? It's a rainbow. Not what we're after today, but go ahead and send him back. All right, buddy. There you go. There you go. Put that mummy up. Nice. That's a good fish. Another thing about location, especially in river system based reservoirs, is that oftentimes the fish will show some kind of migration. So uh, it seems to me the pattern I see in a lot of uh, northwest reservoirs is that fish will be up lake in the spring and then they move their way down uh, towards later spring and summer and then return back up lake in the fall. I see this uh, in Chelan. Oh, there it is. Oh, I think he's still there. You see this in Chelan, Roosevelt, uh, Dwarshack, all those reservoirs show a similar pattern. And a part of that is, is uh, it's just, again, it's that nutrient issue. So, water that comes into the tops of those reservoirs is generally colder and nutrient depleted. 
hasn't had a lot of time for sun energy to create a lot of algal growth and then as it moves down the reservoir it picks up a little bit of nutrients and it gives some time for the algae to grow. I almost got this guy in the boat. Another nice cookie. Now one of the most important tools a kokanee fisherman can have is a fish finder. Uh, a fish finder is going to help you locate those schools of fish, especially on lakes that you're not familiar with. But one of the most common complaints I hear, especially this time of year, early spring, is uh, that anglers go out and they don't mark any kokanee at all. And a part of that reason is, is that a lot of times in the spring, kokanee are feeding shallow. And the cone on your transducer, I I lost this one. As I was saying, the cone on your transducer is narrow. Put up a good bite. So that narrow cone means that there's a lower area that you're covering right underneath the boat. Whereas the, as you move along, you go deeper, that cone spreads out and you get a better capture of what's underneath the boat and further off to the sides of the boat. But kokanee are notoriously motor shy and because they're feeding near the surface in the spring on a lot of lakes, that means that they're moving away from the boat which is reducing your ability to detect them even more. That's a nice fish right there. So if you go out fishing and you know there's kokanee in the lake in the spring and you're not marking any, Odds are they're probably in that top 10 or 15 foot of the water cone. This one feels like good fish. So not only are fish finders pretty critical for helping you locate fish on the lake, uh, but they also are going to help you dial in that depth. And depth is an important component of the kokanee formula. You want to be fishing, you know, five feet above or right at the same level as kokanee now that you're marking. You really don't want to be below kokanee. This really feels like a kokanee. It's so swirly. It's pretty critical that you have that depth reading. And like I said, not marking them, chances are they're shallow. Let's see if I can get this little blue back in the boat. There we go. Nice. But also, what depth is going to tell you is where to set your downriggers, how much lead you need to use to get down, and it'll also help you guide your color selection. So, on the visible spectrum of light, which kokanee can see, and they can also see into the ultraviolet, not all wavelengths penetrate equally across all depths. So your reds and pinks actually phase out the first, and then below that, reds and pinks will just look black. Nice kokanee. While your greens purples and blues penetrate the furthest, well, ultraviolet penetrates those mid depths, so down to 50. But if you're fishing down at 100 feet, those chartreuses, purples, and blues are actually going to be the brighter lures down there. That's not to say that you can't catch kokanee on 
a red lure at depth. Uh, dark, a dark profile lure will still draw in attention. The kokanee have big eyes, so they have very good vision at extreme depth and in the darkness. So be mindful of that when you're when you're fishing at different depths. If you expect fish to be on or near the surface, start with those warmer reds and orange tones. And then transition as you go deeper. It's more of those purples, chartreuse, green. Those are all very effective at extreme depths. If you don't happen to have those lures that day and you mark kokanee deep, uh, fish those reds and oranges, but fish them 5-10 foot above. So that's when the kokanee looks up, they're going to see that strong profile of the lure. And they'll come up and strike. Alright. That's a good hit. Always on that turn. It's really important to make those turns a lot. So kokanee are really sensitive to speed. You got to be between one and one and a half miles per hour in general. Um, and they like you to turn a lot, so they like those changes in speed, either slowing up or speeding down. That time the inside rod got hit, so it just was probably following it, and then when it slowed down, it went for it. In general, I'm gonna look for slower speeds in the spring. I got a double going here now. Gotta keep the pressure on, so land both these fish. This one's a rainbow. I'm gonna trash this one for now so I can pull out another fish over right here. Hopefully this one's a kokanee. But if that inside rod goes off, it kind of tells you that, that they're looking for a little bit slower speed and it slows down on the drop. And then when the outside rods go off more frequently, it tells you they're looking for a little faster speed that day. In general, I'm going to look for slower speeds in the spring when the water temps are cold. And faster speeds as we head into the summer and fall when the water temps are warmer. This looks like kokanee. <laughs> That's a really nice company. That's a nice fish for this lake. Yes! What a fish! <laughs> yeah! That is a big fish. Look at that tank right there. My goodness. Probably 17 inches at least. Size of that thing. That's a big kokanee. There. Wow. Beautiful kokanee. Look at look at that fish right there. Gorgeous. I'll take that any day. Making it very hard to narrate. It's still very windy up here on the shore. But I did grind out my 10 fish limit. It wasn't necessarily a quick limit today, but that's not how it always goes. I mean, sometimes you get your fast limit, sometimes you gotta work for it. 
Got 10 nice fish here, biggest being 16 and a half inches. So not too shabby. Um, probably smallest is 12, but a good haul for the day. You definitely see these are some quality sized kokanee. Can't beat that, so we have some nice fillets. All I did today, because um, I had never fished this lake before, was just apply those basic rules I talked about. That is location, depth, and speed. So you zero in those three things, and uh, you're gonna come away with more fish. Now, I wanna cover more detail later in another episode, but this is just part one. In the second part, which I'll be filming in the next few weeks, I'm gonna start going over those other things that anglers tend to obsess over, but I wanted to cover those core techniques since people tend to overlook them. So next time we'll be covering bait, uh, tackle and gear, and technique. Um, so we'll go through those smaller detail things that help get those limits that you want to bring home every day. Uh, so to keep up to date, be sure to subscribe and like uh, to this channel, and I'll see you next time.